we will continue with our discussion on uh, self correlation function and stochastic motion uh, if you remember that we are continuously i have continuously mentioned to you that uh, for stochastic motion we are studying self correlation function this is uh, i need to mention you that in the structure work structure work structure uh, and phonons phonons we like diffraction liquid and amorphous systems sans polarized neutron reflectometry phonons dispersion relation then density of states these are all are coherent scattering cross sections are used because for structure at any length scale that is short length scale in liquid and amorphous crystallographic structure or in mesoscopic structure we are talking about how one particular atom or molecule or a scattering unit is positioned with respect to another one so we are talking about g of rt when the distinct particles that is also true for phonons because these are collective oscillation of atoms so the there is coherence in their motion and knowing the motion of one particle we can always derive the position and motion of other particles and density of states are simply an integration over q the phonon wave vector and it is also a coherent phenomena so for all this we use g of rt and we use coherent scattering cross section coherent scattering cross section cross section in these experiments the incoherent scattering cross section is a nuisance it's a background but now when you talk about self correlation function gs of rt which we do in our stochastic motion experiments it's the same particle which is at an origin at time t equal to 0 its location at a time t at a place r what is the probability so this is a self correlation function now we are discussing about self correlation function correlation function and we know that we have iqt which is a fourier transform over r and q if i come from r to q in this direction or q to r in this direction q to r in this direction it is g of rt and then one small over omega and time i go to s of q omega and in experiments we measure s of q omega and we try to find out what is the g of rt so in the present case that i am discussing stochastic motion this g of rt is specifically it is self correlation function so this is also related to self correlation function and what we get is a scattering law for the dynamics of a single particle but then this single particle is particle by particle we take average so we take ensemble averages and this is what we are looking for and in quantum mechanical terms i can write the pair correlation function in this manner please see uh, here i have written down the position vectors in terms of operators these are operators in quantum mechanics and that's why i have taken extra pain in writing that the two delta functions where r minus r prime plus r i 0 and delta r prime minus r i t are the position of the same particle at time 0 and time t but because in general these operators don't commute i have taken care to write them as 
the average of two delta functions and then the integration over space for dr prime but this one if i convert it to classical expression it becomes simpler to understand it is basically delta r of ri minus ri t minus ri is zero so it is the position vector at t equal to zero and t equal to t uh, some time t for the distance and this is the delta function r equal to ri t minus ri zero this is one so this is classical incoherent rt for self correlation i think i should also mention this is gs self correlation function and the <coughs> the incoherent intermediate scattering function which i wrote just now for you the incoherent uh, function this is nothing but a fourier transform over d3r for this of this g incoherent classical i am writing classical to make it more simple of e to the power i q dot r d3 r g incoherent r t and this is nothing but once you put this delta function in this as g incoherent you can see it is e to the power minus i q r i t r i 0 sum over all the particles and also averaged over the ensemble so if i have number of particles in the system uh, at least uh, uh, formalism wise i should add up particle by particle this particle its position at 0 0 and its position at t and i do it by particle by particle and i also do an ensemble averaging for the function e to the power minus i q r i t minus r i 0 so now when we talk about uh, t equal to 0 and t equal to infinity basically when th this averaging is done r i t minus r i 0 interestingly if i talk about uh, uh, a particle at time t equal to 0 and the particle at time t equal to infinity then it is not correlated the time t equal to infinity the position is no way correlated with the position at time t equal to 0 and then this averaging I can do it separately so I have broken it up into minus iq dot ri infinity ensemble average of that and ensemble average of the other part ri 0 so please note I started from this pair correlation function in real space its Fourier transform gives me this and here this there is an averaging over ensemble that ensemble average of these two variables or here these two positions I am talking about I am dealing them as classical variables and not as operators then I can do it independently and this is nothing but average value of e to the power i q dot r i infinity at infinite time and at zeroth time the particle position can be anywhere at zeroth time and the particle position can be anywhere at after infinite time has elapsed and they are not correlated so this averaging is done separately and this is nothing but position of the particle position of the particle uh, of the ith particle ensemble average of that and mod of that and square this comes up as a mod of its square so basically what i am looking for is the position of a particle in a in a in space now if this particle is diffusing over entire space then it is uh, any part position can be chosen or if it is uh, chosen in this infinite size space dimensional space or if it is a finite dimensional space then i need to find out the average position of a particle uh, ri at a time t, at, a, at any time t or t equal to zero and its mod square so it is basically i need to find out ri given a particle what is the probability of its position vector ri is the position vector being ri and then basically ensemble average of that and square of that so now if the particle is restricted inside a sphere let us take a simple case if it is the particle is restricted in a sphere what is the probability that this is in a small volume d3r what is the probability that it is in a small volume d3r 
it is nothing but 1 by v into this fundamental volume d3r that is the probability that the particle is in a volume d3r and this is equal to 1 by v then r square dr sin theta d theta d phi in spherical coordinates and that is nothing but a small volume which is between r and r plus dr theta and theta plus d theta phi and phi plus d phi this is a small elemental volume it's a trapezoid spherical trapezoid and uh, then this is a fundamental volume in spherical polar coordinate so now if i take 1 by v out this has to be so e to the power i q dot r so i have to write e to the power i q dot r then 1 by v then the probability is r square dr sin theta r square dr sin theta d theta d phi this is the probability of the small volume and now i need to integrate it over the entire sphere of radius r let us say r so in that case this be, this integration becomes 1 by v e to the power i q dot r r square dr sin theta d theta d phi so r goes from 0 to r theta goes from 0 to pi and phi goes from 0 to 2 pi this covers the sphere and adds up for all the probabilities in all the small elemental volumes which I have taken all over the sphere and now this integral we have done many a times we have done it many times basically I will just give you hints that iq dot r is iq or cos theta so we need to integrate 0 to pi e to the power iq r cos theta cos theta sin theta d theta and then I, you will get from here twice uh, I mean it's, it is e to the power iq or z iq or z dz cos writing cos theta z minus 1 to plus 1 and then next integral will be integration of 0 to r for the result of this integration multiplied by r squared dr and this we have done also when we did the form factor for a sphere and it is the same integral and then i incorporate q omega will have a form like this so for a finite sphere the form is like this and if it is an infinitely i am sorry this is for a if it is a, sorry this is, it is i q r if radius is size r of the sphere if radius of the sphere is r but if I talk about I incoherent Q and this sphere going to infinity that means the particle is diffusing in an infinite medium then you can say this goes to zero. So there is no time dependence for this I incoherent Q and then that means I Q R equal to for a finite sphere this is a size but this does not have any time dependence and so if there is no time dependence then if there is no time dependence we have an aq let's say intermediate scattering function which does not have any time dependence so if i do a time fourier transform to go to s of q omega q omega this this has no time dependence so it is just e to the power i omega t d omega a q value of q so now this becomes a delta function so this is barring a few constant values this should be a q dependent part and a delta omega so that means in my scattered intensity i have a pure delta function 
with a Q dependence in my experimental data and then this is known as elastic incoherent structure factor. I mentioned it earlier also that this is because of the finite size diffusion of the particle. Now if I go to a, a sphere which is infinite radius, infinite radius, then this I incoherent goes to zero, goes to zero. So then the AQ which I wrote as a prefactor of uh, delta omega, this is zero. So you don't have a pure, so for, for diffusion in an infinite medium, 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 no EISS, no inelastic part. But if the medium in which the particle is diffusing is finite, actually this finite also, when I say finite, it's, it is, the R depends on Q. Q R should be, so if Q is large, then R has is small, we know, and when it is a finite size, then depending on the angle or the Q value that I can probe, the finite size is quantified. But in general, in an infinite medium, there is no elastic incoherent structure factor, but in a finite medium, we have a delta function, when I say delta omega, what I mean is this, to consider that there is an energy transfer in the medium, uh, with the, in, in the interaction between the neutron and the diffusing particle. So if delta omega is there, that means this delta function is at omega equal to zero. So this is no energy transfer. Now what we are discussing now is quasi-elastic neutron scattering. This is because this elastic line, it gets broadened. That's why it is called quasi, quasi-elastic neutron scattering. It is almost elastic, it is almost elastic this is basically, as I mentioned to you earlier, is the broadening of the elastic line due to Doppler shifting of the neutron by the diffusing particle. So that's why it's quasi-elastic, it's broadening of the line. You have inelastic intensities far away from the omega equal to zero part. It can be omega 1, omega 2 and then others. So phonons and others, you know phonons we talked about energy transfer of the order of uh, 10 to 80 milli electron volts. But now for incoherent scattering coming from self diffusion of a particle just broadens out the elastic peak and we measure this broadening and this broadening can be 10, typically 10 micro electron volt to let us say 200 microelectron volt resolution depending on how tight energy resolution that you can have and this is broadening of the elastic line that's why it is called quasi-elastic neutron scattering and we look at this broadening uh, in these experiments. Now thing is that one is that broadening of the elastic line due to diffusion but as I discussed with you just now that there is a prefactor, an AQ and a term which has got no energy transfer. So now we have not only broadening of the elastic line but we also have a elastic term. So let me now draw it a little differently. So that means now the time correlation in the system gives me a Lorentzian but that AQ gives me an elastic elastic term riding over this Lorentzian 
Why it is Lorentzian? I'll compute just now. This is the broadening generally gives a Lorentzian. I have mentioned it earlier. Again, I'll show you how it comes. So I have got a Lorentzian plus an elastic line. Elastic line, a delta omega line or omega equal to zero line. If it is a particle which is diffusing in a finite medium. If it is diffusing in a infinite medium, I do have the Lorentzian. I don't have the overriding elastic omega equal to zero line. Why I show it as broadening? Because this is the Lorentzian convoluted with the instrumental resolution. Instrumental resolution. And this is a delta omega, but this is also convoluted with the instrumental resolution. And that's why the delta function gets broadened. So now what we have as follows that in my experiment, let me see. So I have a I have an elastic line and I have an inelastic Lorentzian. Excuse my poor drawing, it's a Lorentzian function riding onto it. Lorentzian function and this comes when the particle is diffusing in a finite medium. I will use examples to show you what sort of finite mediums you are talking about. But this Lorentzian comes from the diffusion of the particle in that medium and it, it actually indicates the dynamics and the diffusion constant most importantly that you can get from this experiments.